Hi, everybody. I'm Avery Travis, in for Brian Mudd. A fan of South Plains politics? Well, here's your talking points this week. An overhaul might be coming to the United States immigration system as Republicans unveil a draft bill, dealing with DACA and even funding for President Trump's long-promised wall. And one year after a shooting at the baseball practice for the congressional game in D.C., Majority Whip Steve Scalise and others took to the field. We'll hear, we'll hear from the congressional aide and Texas rep Roger Williams, who was also injured when those shots were fired. From the studios of KMAC Television in Lubbock, your local election headquarters, this is Talking Points with Brian Mudd, brought to you by Capital Mortgage Services. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Also this week, here in the Hub City, LPNL is working on some pretty big changes that could be coming to your water and electricity use. We've been talking about the possibility of smart meters for a few years now, and City Council has now approved a series of agreements that will bring those meters one step closer to your backyard. Last month, we told you about a unanimous vote by the Electric Utility Board approving a move to the advanced metering technology and a new billing system. LPNL CFO Andy Burcham says the move will improve billing accuracy, reliability, and outage management, as well as how much power the customer has to manage their own energy usage. But a few residents have spoken out, worrying about the effects the new technology will have on residents' health and the safety of their personal data. Even still, City Council's unanimous vote is a vote of support and a big step for the utility company. It's still up for a second reading and a final vote at the next City Council meeting. And in the meantime, here to break it all down for us is LPNL spokesperson Matt Rose. Matt, it's good to have you on. Thank you for having me. I know this has been about four years in the making for you guys. Talk a little bit about uh, Excited. What's kind of the next steps here? Sure. Well. You know, this is an important time in this process because this is where we're getting approvals from both the Electric Utility Board of LPNL and the City Council. But as you mentioned, this has really been a project that we've been looking at for about four years. When you look at the rate management program that we had from 2014 to 2017, that program was focused on uh, upgrading and improving the reliability and functionality of our entire system it's about a 330 million dollar project and so today talking about advanced meters this is a small portion of it dollar wise but it's an integral part of what we need to get in place to get done what we need to get done over the next five years I know you mentioned reliability there, right. kind of a buzzword around all this has been accuracy and reliability. How yes. smart are these meters really going to be in that sense? Sure. Well, one thing you have to understand is that other utilities around the state, they've progressed through meter technology over the years. In Lubbock, LPNL specifically, the meters we're using, that technology was relevant about 40 years ago. We never even started that first step. So to have meter readers walking up and down the alley, climbing on the back of fences with binoculars, trying to spot meters through any number of impediments, um, that's really not how the rest of the industry works today. And so what we're looking to move towards are advanced meters that have the ability to be read from afar. And so you're taking all of the human error out of the equation. Uh, because if that meter reader on the back of the fence is trying to read that meter from 50 yards through trees and he gets the dial, you know, one to the left off, that's a 10,000 kilowatt hour swing. And so you're talking about not only being able to read that meter from afar and get a more accurate reading, but you're also talking about customers being able to have 15 minute interval data. And so whether they're talking to a customer service rep on the phone or they're looking on their account online, they can go on and not only see what they used over the month's time, but they can look at day by day, where do I use the most electricity? Where can I cut down? I see that my costs come from these hours of the day, and maybe if I do something, I can cut down on that usage. And so I've said to a lot of folks, the information that we have at LPNL, we think that you want to have the same information at your disposal as a customer so you can save. Uh, on your end. So talking about those customers, right. when these start being implemented and installed, what can they actually expect to see? Uh, strangers in their backyard? Are there right. going to be any outages related to this? What can those customers prepare for? So what we're looking at right now is uh, with approval by board and council, uh, 
we will be laying the backbone for the communications infrastructure. You know, all of the different receivers throughout the city that will communicate with the meters themselves. And then in, uh, in early fall, we will put out a, a program of about 500 meters strategically placed throughout the city. We'll do extensive testing and then next January, if everything is working properly, we'll do a full deployment of the meters. And so we'll have maps on our website showing what areas are being deployed at what time, but we'll have a big outreach effort to customers, door hangers, folks coming out of their house to explain things to them because we will have to go replace your current meter with the new meter. Uh, and we want to make sure folks know what we're doing. We'll also have safety protocols on our website so that for a customer that gets a notification, if they want to go online and they want to check to see that the person that's contacting them is legitimate, they can do that because we want folks to have the least amount of stress possible as we work through this deployment process. Last question for you. I know there has been a little bit of pushback from some citizens, concerns right. over uh, how it will affect our health, how this technology sure. will also affect uh, citizens' private information and, and security in that sense. Anything to say to those, uh, those citizens yeah, out there? Absolutely. Um, when it comes to the health aspects of this, um, these meters communicate through a radio frequency, but it is a radio, radio frequency that is far less than cell phones, wireless routers, microwave ovens, uh, you know, various types of USBs. And so when you look at comparing that to other items that are in your house today, uh, basically if you were to stand in front of these meters as they're functioning eight inches away for a year, you would not receive the amount of radio frequency that you get from your common phone call on your cell phone. It's far less than that. Uh, in terms of privacy, all of the information that's going to be transmitted, each one of these meters has a unique code, and the only thing that will be transmitted is usage data. So it's no different than, you know, what comes on your bill today, but it doesn't have any sort of personal information or payment information, so you don't have to worry about that. And then in terms of privacy, all we're looking at is usage data. We don't have any information with these meters on what's inside of your home, and I would venture to guess that the average person would feel less of an invasion of privacy from us reading your meters from afar than as we do today, which is a human being standing up here on your fence with binoculars looking into your backyard. So it, in, in our mind, this is giving you a level of privacy you don't have today. But in terms of the meter readers we have out in the field, we also want folks to know that we're not looking to do any sort of elimination of those positions, but instead we're working to take those positions, make them more technical positions so they can continue working on those meters because we're still going to need to have folks out there that can uh, do maintenance on these meters, uh, replace if needed. And so, you know, really we look at this in terms of the benefits to the customer and the utility and, you know, as we go through this, we want to communicate as much as possible. So please visit our website, lpnl.com. We'll have information up there, but we'll also be out in the community talking to folks as we go along. All right. So you heard him be looking out for that. Matt Rose with LPNL. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me. So that brings us straight to this week's poll question. Are you on board for smart meters to monitor your electric and water usage? Talk to us on our KMAC Facebook page and on everythinglubbock.com. Click on Talking Points and give us your opinion. Still to come on Talking Points with hundreds of Republicans gathering in San Antonio for the GOP convention, those on the other side of the political spectrum are also gearing up for the Democratic convention in Fort, Fort Worth. We're sitting down for five good minutes with a delegate from the local Democratic Party to see what they expect to see on the agenda.